Day number two, goal setting. Okay, in, in day number two, um, with your manager, he's gonna go review what you talked about the day before, which would have been expectations. Um, by now, you've kind of got your, your feet wet a little bit with knocking by yourself, knocking with your manager, one of the two or both. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's a lot of questions, um, a lot of interesting experiences that you had when you were out there knocking, but uh, it's fun um, and it's only gonna get better and better. But uh, realize that those moments when you're out there knocking, um, there are moments you're going to remember for, for the rest of uh, probably your life. Um, I can still remember, think back when I first started knocking, clear up to, to now, some of those experiences I had, and, and they're fun. So, um, so let's uh, dive into uh, um, goal setting. So everyone has a goal, right? Or everyone should have a goal or multiple goals, right? Um, if I were to sit down with each and every one of you and set goals or go over your goals and ask you, what you need to, what do you need to do to be able to accomplish those goals? Hopefully you would have a, a plan in place of, of what you needed to do in order to accomplish those goals. Um, everyone says that they want to hit their goals. Everyone says they want to make X amount of money during, during the year. Um, but when the going gets tough, how many people actually follow through with that? That's the, that's the question, right? And so as we dive into goals, um, let's make sure and, and set goals that are going to help push us and uh, goals that uh, we can also accomplish while we're, we're being pushed to, uh, to, uh, to our limits. So um, one thing that's important when you're setting goals, I'm going to go over some of the, the, the bullet points and then uh, uh, with your manager, um, I want you to write down those, those goals um, and then we'll go on to the next segment um, after you do that. Um, is first set descriptive goals. So when you have goals, your reasons of why you're doing this, um, be very descriptive on what those goals are going to be. So, uh, for instance, if uh, you say you're going to make a lot of money, that's cool, but what are you going to do with that money that you earn, right? So, if your number one goal is to make money, which it probably is for most everyone, break it down to what are you going to do with that money? So, for example, if it's I'm going to vacation, I'm going to pay off student debts, I'm going to buy an engagement ring. I'm going to pay off my, whatever it may be, be very descriptive on, on what that is. The reason why that's important is if you just say, I'm going to make out a lot of money, there's not a whole lot of reason behind it. And there needs to be a reason. And by making those a list of descriptive goals, that's going to, that's going to be something that's going to help you push um, towards achieving that. Um, set achievable goals. So, <laughs> I've seen it before where a brand new rep um, sets a goal, I want to do 800 accounts this year. Well, is it doable? Yeah, it, it probably is, but um, that's, that's a really high benchmark to hit and probably realistically is not very not achievable. So make sure and in, in, in set a, a goal that's going to push you, but one that you can hit. Um, when I first started, my goal was I wanted to sell and install one and a half accounts per day. So in the summer, there were 100 knocking days, let's say. So my goal was 150 installed accounts for the, for the year, for the summer. And so that was a goal. And that, that, by breaking that down, that helped me being able to, to accomplish that. Um, so make sure and in, in, in set goals that are going to push you, but that are achievable. The, the next thing is to create strong enough reasons of why you're doing what you're doing. Knocking doors for some isn't the most sexy thing, right? Um, doing it for eight, nine, 10 hours a day. Um, but you need to be able to create strong enough reasons for why you are out there knocking, all right? And that kind of goes hand in hand with, uh, with you setting descriptive goals, right? That's creating a reason for, for you doing what you're doing, or you're doing, however, uh, pushing you towards, you know, hitting that vacation or, um, you know, paying for a car, whatever it might be. So um, create a strong enough reasons, reason for why you're doing what you're doing. One thing that I do and I've done in the past is I've, I've made a list of all the, the reasons of why I'm doing this. And then back in the day, I would print out what it is. So if it was to pay for school, I'd, I'd print off a picture of, tuition or whatever, um, a school and then, you know, books and then 
you know, paying off, off, off student debts and things like that. Another one was um, vacationing. So what I'd do is I'd print off all those things that I wanted to be able to accomplish. And then I would have that literally in my car as well as in my binder. So every day that I would go out to sell, I would look at that. Um, and that helped me and reminded me of the reasons why I do what I do. Um, nowadays, what you can do is you can, you can take a snapshot of whatever you want to be able to accomplish um, and the reasons why you're doing it, and you can put it on your phone. So every day, that, every time that you look at your phone, um, it's something that's going to um, help push your whatever. So create strong enough reasons. Um, um, another thing when, when we're talking about goal setting is create milestones. Create milestones within yourself as well as maybe company-wide. And so some of the ways to do that is maybe you want to be the rep that, that finishes in the top 10 as a rookie, right? Um, and you want your name to be um, on those, you know, held high in, in the gym at the corporate headquarters so everyone can see it for this year, right? Um, maybe it's you want to be known as the having the highest quality score or the most uh, additional products and services sold. Whatever it might be, create those milestones for yourself as well as maybe company-wide. I know some people out there, they really love that recognition. Others don't, but realistically, everyone does, right? And so that's, um, that, that's important. So whatever those milestones may be, you create those. Um, if you want your name to be, to be recognized and mentioned all the time, do what it takes to, to, to be able to create that milestone. And then another important thing when we're setting goals is to make a plan and do it. So um, one thing I've, I've done, you have all the tools in the world. You have Domo, you have SalesRabbit. Um, heck, you can create your own uh, Excel spreadsheet. Whatever it is, whenever you have a goal, um, um, track it. And so if you have a goal of 300 or 400 accounts, um, come up with a plan to be able to achieve that. One thing that I've done is I'll have a goal board. Um, I know Kevin Trost has done this too uh, as well, but uh, I, if my goal was 300 or 400 or, or 200 for the year or for the summer, um, I would literally make a board, ha number it one through 200, and then for each day that I had a job that was sold that was in, excuse me, that was installed, I would mark it off. And so by me visualizing that and seeing that, um, that helped me not only plan, but accomplish what I wanted to do for that day. So if you have a goal of 200, make a board, and for each install, uh, mark off that board. So make a plan and do it. That goes hand in hand with the next thing, with tracking your goals. Uh, when you make a plan, obviously you wanna be able to track your goal. So now what I want you to do is I want you to spend about five to 10 minutes um, going over um, goals, creating those milestones with your manager, with your leader, um, and that will help push you. Okay, now that you've set goals with your manager or with, with your leader, um, I want you to take a, a, a short uh, couple minutes and watch the video on goal setting that Brandon Boudreau did, one of our vice presidents of sales, um, about what he's done um, the mindset that he's had with goals. Goals. So uh, for me, goal setting uh, is probably one of my favorite things. I love goal setting. In my mind, it's it's the way that we visualize the future, uh, and and it's it's how we create ourselves in the future, and, and that's why I love it. Um, for me, it's it's the thing that's really kind of pushed me to become a better version of myself. With with that in mind, I think there's three things you have to have when you're when you're. Uh, Goal setting. The first is you have to write it down. It has to be something that's written um, so that you have some way to go back and see it. You have to have a start date and an end date. I think if you don't have a start and end date, then it's it's not possible to accomplish. And the last thing is it's got to be measurable. So if you can measure something, there's a start and an end date, and you write it down, then you have a goal. And, and for me, when you when you put those things together, um, I think I think of a, a plaque that was on my my parents' fridge uh, growing up. It said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And I think that um, the people who really succeed in life, any person I've ever seen that succeeds at a high level, or, or just in general, has mastered the art of, of goal setting. They've, they've learned that goal setting is actually something that is, is a, a must in life, and they've gone and they've, they've put that to work for them instead of 
letting life happen to them. So for me, that's that's a really big thing in my life is to make sure that I, I set those goals, that I go out and I have um, something to go and achieve. Okay, that was an awesome video that Brandon Boudreaux um, did. Um, now, what I want you to do is today sometime is spend 30 minutes reviewing the goals that you set with yourself and with your, your leaders um, and then put it into to action. Um, as you set goals, um, those are something that are going to help push you towards what ultimately you want to be able to accomplish. Sometimes goals can be a little overbearing. I always use this analogy um, of the elephant ears. Growing up, we had a family of nine. There was a lot of us. We always had food on the table, roof over our head, but we didn't have a lot of extra means. Um, every year we would go to the, uh, a county fair and with, with all seven kids, that's a lot, of, a lot of mouths to feed. And we'd always go to this place that um, basically what it is is they would, they would uh, deep fry, it was deep fried bread, they would cook and then they would, they would sprinkle sugar and cinnamon over it. And what it was is this deep fried bread the size of an elephant ear. And obviously they were huge. And my parents, they would, what they would do is they would buy two of those. And if they just gave, handed me one of those elephant ears, there's no way I could eat that in one bite. And so the analogy that I always use is, like the elephant ears, is, is you're setting goals. What you need to do is break down your goals. Okay, just like the elephant ears. Break down the elephant ears bit by bit so it becomes easier to be able to eat. It's the same thing with goals. As you break down your goals, they're going to become easier and easier. So if you have a goal of 200, break that down just like you're breaking down the elephant ears. As you do that, it's going to be, uh, become easier for you to be able to accomplish um, what you set out to, to do. Uh, that's day two, goal setting. Appreciate all of you guys and gals as you guys are out there. The slice is nice. <laughs>